This is the Player's Guide for the GURPS Game Aid for Foundry. Your GM is running GURPS on Foundry and wants you to play, so they will provide you a URL that you type into your favorite browser. We find that Chrome works best. That's all you need. Enter the URL and it'll bring you to the login page. Select your user and type in your password and then join the game system. You'll be asked to pick your color, and this is used by Foundry and various elements to indicate who you are, and select your character if you have more than one. The GM will assign these to you. And now you're in Foundry. On the top right, we have the various tabs. You're mostly going to be using chat, combat, actors, journals, and config. But most of the time, you're just going to want to have the chat tab open. You can right mouse click on any tab and it'll open up in a separate window. And this is very useful in combat to say, bring up the combat tracker and put it someplace else. That way you can see both. The top left is the token controls, measurement and journal. The most common mistake is you get out of token controls and then you try to grab your token and move it and you can't, that's because you're in something else. Get yourself back into token controls. This, by the way, is also where modules will add other features. We add the effects modifier pop-up button, and I currently have splatter loaded, so it gives me the ability to clear blood. On the bottom left is the list of connected players, and then the macro bar, and then our modifier bucket. More on that later. 3D6, which you can just click and roll 3D6, or if you right mouse click, it rolls 1D6. By the way, you notice dice are appearing. I have the Dice So Nice module installed. And the game pause spinner is just telling us that the GM has paused the game, which means I cannot move my token around. You can move the map by right mouse clicking and dragging, and you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. But let's get to your character sheet. On the characters tab, any character that you control will be displayed here and you can click on the name and that will open the character sheet. Or if your token is on the screen someplace, you can double click on your token and that will open the character sheet. You can move it anywhere and it'll remember that. Also, you can double click on the title bar and it will collapse it. So let's take a look at the character sheet. Most things that are in yellow are actually buttons. As you mouse over them, they'll turn into a button that you can click and it will roll that. For example, the GM asks you to roll against your character's perception value. You would mouse over the perception button and press it. If you look at the top right there, there's a little exclamation point above the chat tab indicating that something new has appeared there. That's why I recommend that you probably keep the chat tab open all the time. And you can see that your character has rolled perception and they succeeded, yay. Now the GM may ask you to roll blind perception, meaning you do not see the results. You can do that by holding down the control key or the command key on the Macintosh and pressing the same button. And it doesn't show us the result, but on the right is the GM window and you can see the result here. I'll do it again. We don't see the result, but the GM does. Or the GM may just put the roll in the chat for us. You can see here, blind roll perception. It's a button. If I mouse over it, it will roll a blind roll for Alejandro. So I will do that. The GM may put other things in the chat log and you can click on them in the chat log and roll them. You can also save them. I can take this blind roll perception if I know I'm going to be doing it a lot and I can drag it onto the macro bar. So now I have a macro button that rolls the blind roll perception. I can also take this and drag it into this little teeny area. This is called the quick notes area, and it's a place for you to put quick notes. And that puts the blind roll perception button there. Okay, if Alejandro hasn't found it by now, he's never gonna find it. These trackers right here monitor your hit points and your fatigue points. You can manually change them by clicking these buttons. Holding down the shift key will make it move by five. You can reset by clicking these buttons. Although in most cases, you may not have to manually control this. The GM may be controlling this for you, especially for damage. Over here on the right, this yellow bar is not clickable, but dodge is, that is your character's dodge. This button's gonna be used a lot, so remember where it's at. Melee and ranged weapons will appear here. To do the attack, you can either click on the usage column or the level column. They both do the same thing, just gives you a little more space to click on them. Parry and block are for defense, and then damage allows you to roll the damage. 
Below that, you'll see the skills, the skill level and the relative skill level. You can click on either column. They'll both roll the appropriate skill. So here's first aid. And to the right of the skill, you see these blue links. If the GM has set up their game system, this will take you to the light PDF, page 14. And this will take you to the basic set, page 194. You can scroll down or use your mouse wheel to see your equipment and any notes you might have. You can keep track of quantities of items using the plus or minus. So if I add some silver coins, you'll see this little symbol over here. This indicates that you're keeping track of the count here in Foundry, and it will be different than what's in GCA or GCS, but you want to track the number here in Foundry. You can add new notes by pressing the plus sign, or you can add equipment by clicking in the title bar and add new equipment at the end. However, I would only add things like consumables. If you're adding equipment like weapons, you really should do that in your character creation tool like GCA or GCS because of all the other things that it calculates for you. You may also see yellow buttons in other areas of your character sheet, and these are buttons that you can click on. These were created using the on-the-fly formulas, but more on that later. In GURPS, a success roll is 3d6 versus a target number plus or minus modifiers. Well, that's where the modifier bucket comes in. The number in the bucket is added or subtracted from the target before applying the roll. And the modifier bucket pops up a tooltip. If I move my mouse over this bucket, this tooltip appears. It shows various modifiers you can add. Common combat modifiers, standard modifiers over here, even modifiers that your GM may provide in their own journal entry plus just straight numbers, or you can type in your own modifier down here. Or you can just move over the modifier bucket and use your mouse wheel. This will also set a modifier. So if the GM asks you to make a perception at a minus two because of bad lighting, you set this up by first applying all your modifiers and then clicking on the perception button. So we will go into the modifier bucket and I could just put a minus two or I could use the mouse wheel. There is, under the lighting menu here, a minus two for twilight, gaslight, flashlight, and I'll, oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Well, you can see the current modifiers over here. I can remove this modifier just by clicking on this trash can. Also, if you have a bunch of modifiers in there and you just don't want them, you can click on the little trash can icon down here and that will get rid of it. But we're trying to set it up for lighting. Now, if you just put in a minus two or you use the mouse wheel to put in a minus two, that'll work. It just doesn't show any additional information in the chat log. And other people might be more interested in seeing that too. So I will actually add this minus two modifier and get rid of this one. And now I can click on the perception. And you can see how the modifier comment appears there. And it makes it a little easier to understand why you took the minus two. Now, if you need to do this again, you can set it up again, or you can click on the information in the chat log. To set up the minus two modifier, I can just click on the modifier there in the chat log, and you can see it is now in the modifier bucket. And I can click on the perception status. One last important thing about the modifier bucket is you can save complex modifier buckets. Let's say you're in combat and the enemy spellcaster has cast a debuff on you, making it harder for you to hit. The GM has sent that modifier in the chat log. It's over here and I can click on it and then it's now in my modifier bucket. But you're trying to knock the wand out of their hand. So you're going to shoot for their hand. Here's a minus four modifier. But the GM also indicates that it's bad lighting. So you go into lighting and select the torch that they've indicated. So here is this modifier bucket with all of these modifiers. What you can do is drag the modifier bucket onto a macro button. And now anytime you click on the macro button, it will set your modifier bucket up. So here I'll clear my modifier bucket. I'll press this button and it's back again. The last thing I wanna show you are the chat commands and the on the fly formulas. If you type slash help, you will see the available chat commands. And this link will open up the user's guide. You can go to the on the fly formulas section and see all of the various formulas that we support. And if you type this into your text areas on your character sheet, they'll turn into buttons and do these various things. I'll leave you with an example. We want to create a button for Alejandro to do an acrobatic dodge. I'll double click on the quick notes area and enter in this formula. It says create a button with the label acrobatic dodge. And if you roll the acrobatic skill and it passes, then roll dodge at a plus two, otherwise roll dodge at a minus two. So we'll save 
And now here's the acrobatic dodge button. And if I click on it, he failed his acrobatics and failed his dodge. Another example of a beneficial on-the-fly formula is the first aid kit. When rolling first aid, if you have a first aid kit, you can roll it at a plus one. Well, we can create that modifier. I can double click on the first aid kit and the editor opens up. And in the notes section, I will create an on-the-fly formula. On-the-fly formulas are always inside of square brackets. So this will create a plus one bonus with the label that just says with kit. And you can see the button down here now. So if I want to roll first aid, I can click this. It adds it into the modifier bucket and then click the first aid roll. And you can see in the chat that it's 13 plus one because of the kit. I'd like to be able to take this plus one kit modifier and put it closer to the first aid skill because obviously they're used together. Well, I can take this and drag it to the first aid skill and it will add the on the fly modifier there. The reverse is true. I can take the first aid skill and drag it down to the first aid kit and it will create an on the fly formula down there. Also, you can take your modifier bucket. I'm gonna use this macro to fill up my modifier bucket. So here's the modifier bucket with all the modifiers. And I, I use that a lot when I'm fighting. So I'm gonna drag that directly onto the rapier. So I'm gonna take this and drag it onto the rapier. And there you go. Doesn't have a good name. You'll have to go in and edit it yourself, but there's the modifier bucket. You can double click on this. And there's the on the fly formula that creates that. And then we just need to uh, change the name. I'm going to call it nighttime. And if your GM has any sound modules or animation modules installed, you can use the on the fly formulas and chat commands to add combat animations or animations to anything. Alejandro is going to fight Bog here. So he's going to target Bog. And to do that as a player, you just double right mouse click. It's not completely necessary, but it helps the GM a little bit later and the animation sort of needs to know where it's going to go. And now Alejandro can attack. Admittedly, it's not necessary to play GURPS, but man, doesn't it look and sound cool. Hopefully you can see how the GURPS game aid for Foundry will allow you to play GURPS online pretty easily. If you have any questions, join us in the GURPS Discord and we will be more than happy to walk you through it. And as always, thank you for watching.